Good morning, everybody. This is OPB. Uh, just gonna come at you with a quick video here. I had a topic on my mind all night. After yesterday, we had a, uh, I wanna say incident in my group. Uh, one of our tribe members. Sorry, I was just trying to maintain speed here. There's a whole bunch of cops in the area recently, so not trying to get a ticket. Um, one of my tribe members was practicing his gray man theory. Uh, he does live in downtown, so he was practicing a gray man bug out scenario to where I'm at which is just on the outskirts of town and then from there we're going to do our bug out to our location doing some training drills given what's going on in the world right now uh he what I've heard people say before was wearing a bro vet I guess is what they're calling it um style clothing uh and he was saying he noticed a lot of people looking at him. Uh, so just going over a little bit of gray man theory and how to carry certain items with you. Well, uh, you're say on a bug out to a better location or to meet up with your mag, uh, tribe, whatever you want to call it. Now, when you are bugging out, you don't want to wear any descript clothing. So you kind of just want to blend in with, uh, with your area. Sorry for any noise there. I got a case of water in my truck there that I'm taking to uh, a location tonight after work, which is where I'm going right now. Uh, So when you're looking for certain things and you're bugging out, okay? I see people all the time walking down the street and you can clearly tell they're trying not to be seen. Uh, walking down the street wearing flashy clothing, bright colored shoes. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I'm wearing orange shoes right now, but they're my gym shoes. I just got back from working out and uh, changed and I just left them on. Or in the city, I'm guilty of this also. Wearing mossy oak camo or no one else is wearing mossy oak camo. Uh, so yeah, that tends to draw a little bit of an eye. But, nine chances out of 10. I've worked this entire lockdown, okay? I haven't missed a single day of work, seven days a week this entire lockdown. I work on tractors, transport trucks, cars, you name it, okay? So, this entire lockdown I've been working. And the reason why I'm wearing these bright orange shoes is because I'm going to test something out. I am going to carry my bug out bag in my work uniform. Nine chances out of ten, let's be honest with ourselves here, you're going to be at work if something were to happen. Unless you work from home you're probably going to be at work. So what can you get away with carrying while you're at work or having near you while you're at work that'll allow you to bug out and sustain yourself long enough to get to your bug out location. So in my bug out bag, I've got three liters of water. My bug out's not that far, so I don't really have to worry about that. And it's uh, out in the middle of nowhere. I'm driving through a cornfield right now. Uh, again, just on the outskirts of town, of a major town. A uh, million people population. Here in Canada, that's uh, fairly large. Um, anyways. So... 
living on the outskirts of town, and uh, you got I work out in the country. Uh, town I work in has a population of 5,000, so I'm not too concerned with anything happening there. If something does happen there, it won't be that hard to get away from it because there's barely enough people to block a road. And in all honesty, it's a mostly elderly population in that area, or very young. There's not too many people there that are within the age range of 30 to, say, 50. It's a retirement area, and the ones that are there that are in their 20s uh, are probably working. So their bosses probably won't let you leave, won't let them leave. Now, my boss and I are of similar mindset because my boss is in my tribe. Uh, if something were to happen, we already have preset plans, everybody at work will leave, yada shmada, and get home to their families. And uh, we have supplies at work, should we need to. That's actually our rally point. Oh, one of our rally points for training purposes only, not for actual bug out. It's too in the open for bug out, it'd be stupid to use that. But just as a, hey, let's meet here, let's practice our, our movement on a day where we don't want to draw too many eyes. Just thinks we're a bunch of friends meeting up. Once we're there, we sit around in lawn chairs, drink a cup of coffee, kind of have people's eyes glance over us. That's something they do out there. But meanwhile, we're actually talking about some serious stuff. Um, yes, I'm in my work uniform, so if you really want to know, you would probably be able to tell where I work. And if you want to come and sit down and have a conversation, go for it. Uh, anyways. So, back to... So I went off on a little tangent there. Uh, gray man. And having an incident happen while you're at work. Uh, this lockdown, I found out about it. On the news, obviously. Uh, well, lockdown-wise. Anyways, that was, I found out about that on the news while I was at work. Uh, at my work, there's a couple volunteer firefighters. Uh, I have myself do security on the side. There's a couple other people there that do security on the side. Uh, just for some extra cash. So, we all know, we've seen people, and uh, use some slang here, but some sketchy people, uh, people who either are on drugs or not in the right mind space, we see what they can do. I, myself, a couple nights ago had a break-in to deal with, uh, called the cops, you know how that goes down. Um, yeah. So here in Canada, we haven't really had, in all honesty, that much of uh, riots. There's been no riots. There's been a couple of protests, peacefully. Uh, no one's setting anything on fire because, you know, we don't do that. Uh, so having that in mind that there's been very few riots so pro there's been two protests but nothing where I live I saw one person one a singular person holding a sign with the phrase on it that we all know that I'm not going to say here on YouTube sorry this is about to get loud okay uh, road conditions here are not very good as this running joke goes here in Canada and the United in the United Kingdom they drive on the left here in Canada we drive on what's left uh, yeah the roads are horrible uh, so given the fact that there is very little chance of protest or riot even when there was the lockdown that went down nobody was saying anything the town that I live in well live outside of is a government town 
most of the people there work for the government. Um, and it is not an area where there's a lot of issues, in all honesty. They all work for the government. So, my assumption was correct in the first place. Should something happen, the city goes into lockdown. You can still move. Cops don't care. As long as you're moving not large amounts of stuff. And if you are going to move large amounts of stuff, have multiple vehicles, which goes back to if you don't have a group, get one. Uh, get friendly with like minded people. Uh, get to know people outside of the town. Expand your networking. And again, sorry, I tend to do that, go off on a little tangent there. So, Gray Man. What I carry on me on a daily basis is a Buck 110 folder, a Leatherman Wave multi-tool. You can't carry guns here in Canada, so that's not an everyday carry item. Uh, should things get bad, I have the ability to, but I'm not going to break the law for no reason. Okay, if this is real bug out, yeah, well, well yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm taking what I got and I'm going. Uh, handguns here are almost impossible to tell, get and possess so most people have long long guns, shotguns rifles, deer hunting rifles especially out here in the country uh, everyone has a deer rifle and it's nothing to be said for a bunch of guys on ATVs riding down the side of the road with either a 308 or a 7mm Remington like it's nothing that's personally what I would prefer is a 7mm Remington. I harvested a lot of deer with that in the last four years. Um, so I know it works. Now, as you're carrying gray man, you're wearing nondescript clothing. So something that doesn't create stimulus to the mind so no flashy logos, no bright colors, no out there clothing. If I see a dude walking down the street with a crop top on, yeah, well, guess what? That's stimulus. It may be black, but I still know this dude's walking down the street with a crop top on. Okay, stuff like that. Wear clothing that fits you, okay? Uh, don't wear skinny jeans or tight-fitting clothing as a dude. Please, dear God, don't do that. Uh, first of all, you can't move in it. Second of all, uh, personal opinion. Dude shouldn't be wearing that because of your nether regions. Uh, tight-fitting clothing has been shown to lead to infertility. And that's not a good thing. Uh... When you're wearing clothing, make sure that it's subdued. Uh, I tend to stick with earth tones, and if I am going to wear something that's brightly colored, it's to be uh, professional. Okay? And you'd be surprised how often in a dressy environment I have gotten away with wearing Rothko BDU pants and a black polo shirt. That's what I tend to wear. Or a system of that. Whether it be a red polo shirt, a blue polo shirt. But polo shirts are known as professional. So if you want to look professional and draw less attention to yourself, that's something you can do. Another thing, I live in Canada. Most guys here have beards. That's something I also don't see a lot around on YouTube, okay? If the area in which you're in or the area in which you are going to, lots of people have facial hair, being clean shaven, you are going to stick out. And also, think about it this way. 
I keep a beard. Now, I keep a beard for two reasons. One, because I live in Canada and everyone here has a beard, so I fit in like that. Two, if I shave, I have, I look like I'm 12. Uh, so that's a standout right there. You can be, they can guess your age a lot easier. I've had people say that I look in my 30s with my beard. I've had people say I look like I'm 15, 16 without my beard. Okay? So you can throw off if somebody's looking for you. Very easily throw them off if you shave it off. Okay? So that's another thing to take into, into consideration. How can you alter? If you don't wear glasses and you need to slip under the radar, try having a set of glasses. You can buy them at party stores and all that with the, just the clear lenses, no magnification, no prescription, just like your standard costume glasses, I guess you could say. I keep a, a pair of those. Should I have to go full gray man? I don't wear glasses. I haven't worn glasses since I was grade two, grade three. Uh, and in all honesty, I didn't need them then either. I have 20-20 vision. So, I think one of the, the eye doctor, you know, just knew. Right? Anyways. So, carry things on you that you will need if you have to bug out. Uh, gray man. Okay? Where, don't carry a bag that's molly if that sticks out, uh, don't carry tactical looking stuff, okay? Uh, it's a nondescript black backpack. If you want to have a little logo on it, like those Jansport bags are pretty good. Uh, I got a couple of buddy kits that I don't currently have in the truck because I'm not carrying any buddies right now. But if I know I'm carrying a lot of people, I have buddy kits that are what are essentially a uh, high speed low drag uh, kit. Uh, it fits underneath the seats, except for in the front, I hang them off the back. Uh, buddy bag, each one inside has a liter and a half of water, water filter, uh, emergency rations, has a tarp. Uh, poncho, uh, ranger blanket, a wooly. Some of you know what those are. Uh, just stuff like that. Just real easy stuff. And all my friends carry knives. Uh, so I already know they're going to have a knife. And they are all carry lighters. Uh, most of my friends smoke. I do not smoke. I don't recommend anybody smokes. But I do also carry a lighter. Um, yeah. So carry the things that you know you're going to need and when you carry those things that you know you're going to need make sure that they don't stand up so I on my work uniform on my right hip I carry my Buck 110 and my Leatherman Wave and I, I've always carried Buck 110, Leatherman Wave right there on my hip, right pocket is my lighter you know, just the standard stuff uh, when you're moving through areas, like for example, right now I'm coming up to a town. Okay, this town's small, there's 500 people that live here. Uh, there's more cows in this area than there is people, okay? Uh, this place doesn't even have a grocery store. Okay, that's how small it is. Here in Canada, we only have a population of like 36 million people, and right? we're the second largest country in the world. Uh, Russia's the only one that's bigger. Uh, we're still better at hockey, but I won't get into that one. Uh, yeah, so this town's only got 500 people in it, and this is actually where I saw the singular protester. Single. One person. A young white male. That's all I saw, holding a uh, sign that was very contradictory, but whatever. Um... Yeah, so if you know that there's a high chance of riots, you have to plan your route. Uh, recently, in a town that I normally don't go through, 
I was doing a little recce. For those of you who don't know, that means recon. I was doing a little recce in uh, my area, just scoping things out, seeing how things go. Uh, seeing what the state of the beach town surrounding where I'm going is, knowing information like that is key. Keep a notebook. Things that you see that are suspicious, if you go into a store and you see, hey, they're running low on this, and you go to another store uh, in another town and they're the same way, maybe there's a supply chain issue. Uh, for us up here, uh, for a while there, I couldn't find bottled water. Uh, bottled water was not to be had. The only thing you could find is those big four liter uh, jugs, I guess you could say, with the handles on them. It's the only thing I could see. Uh, there was no water to be found. Uh, I guess everyone panicked, bought it up. But on the plus side, there's water now. Okay? I foresee in the coming months that there will be another lockdown. If not a lockdown, then there will be more control inputted into the system. Uh, I know a lot of my friends there in the States, uh, they were the truck drivers, uh, or one of them is in the military, he's a Marine, and down in California. Anyways, they were given, a couple of them were given, uh, travel papers. My father included, actually, was given travel papers. Uh, he works fa farther downtown than I do. I work, well, he works the complete opposite direction. Um, yes, yeah, so he was given travel papers because for a couple of days there, when this whole lockdown started, there was actually police checkpoints in that area. Uh, you got to remember, they didn't know what this was. They didn't know if it was a chemical weapon. They didn't know if, or, sorry, a biological weapon. They didn't know if it was just your average flu or whatever. Like, they didn't know. Uh, but I'm not going to say the word because YouTube will demonetize this, but I'm pretty sure it already is. So, uh, yeah, there was actually police checkpoints. If you didn't have a reason for being out of your house... Well, guess what? Turn around and go back home. I don't know if anyone got arrested or what, but I'm sure people like to run their mouths, so I'm sure someone got arrested somewhere. Uh, if that were to happen to me, I had no travel papers. And there was no... Well, there was talk of giving us some. Uh, but, luckily for us, again small town, I know all the cops in the area, okay, that's another thing to take into account, if you live in a small town, get to know your law enforcement, if you are the law enforcement, get to know the, the people, uh, that's very common up here, it's nothing for a cop off duty, okay, in a small town, it's just to drive by, especially if you know them and come knock on your door and have a couple beers, you know, just relax, but get to know the cops, not all of them are bad, okay, don't get me wrong, there's bad apples everywhere, there's bad apples that are doctors, nurses, you, you know, there's bad people everywhere, okay, so, get to know people in your area, uh, I did an area study recently, uh, well, I redid an area study of the area in which I live, uh, which is con which has made me very seriously start looking at other places to live. Recently, there has been a biker gang that has moved in to a town not so far away from mine. Uh... I'm not going to say the name of the gang, but it's not one that most people would know, okay? Uh, and from what I can gather from other motorcycle clubs that are just that clubs, uh, I'm good friends with a lot of vets, so there's a uh, Veterans Canada, or 
motorcycle club, right? A bunch of vets that either have PTSD, wounded, or prior service, you know, just riding, keeping the brotherhood alive, uh, looking out for one another. Very good organization. They do a lot of work for children's hospitals. Uh, they volunteer a lot. Great people. Very, very great people. My next door neighbor is one of them, and I would trust him with my life. Okay? Uh, so, from what I can gather from them, and they will not lie, they will tell you exactly how it is. They don't mince words. They told me that this gang is up there with people who are bad, okay? Uh, trying to keep this nondescript. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of people like, there's that that now I have to uh, keep an eye on. Uh, recently, I was driving home from my girlfriend's house, and I came across three of them on the road. Uh, going the opposite direction to me. But I know exactly where their clubhouse is. I know exactly how many members they have. And so do the police. And they're being watched. Um, but that's something else you got to consider. Okay? Yes, you can have all your preps. And this talk's kind of turned into a little rant, and I might just leave it at that, because I haven't made a video for YouTube in a while. So I'll kind of just give you guys a general update. You know what? That's what I'll call this video. General update. Uh, anyway, so this biker gang has uh, dealings in certain subsistence. But I can't even speak this morning. And... Uh, they're not known to be too friendly. Uh, so, my girlfriend's house, well, her parents' house, is where I was coming back from. Now, these people are roughly in between. They're a little bit off. I can avoid them if I need to. Are in between me and her. So, if for some reason something were to happen and I have to get to her, I now know that that, that, that threat, potential threat, is within my area. Sorry for any road noise again. Um, so I know that threat is in my area. So now I have taken that into account when dealing with my bug out or travels, okay? Now, I'm always vigilant of stuff that's going on around me. I make sure that everything is registered in my mind. I don't let anything pass. If I see something that's questionable, I make sure that I note it mentally. And if it's really bad, I'll note it physically in a notebook. I keep right where my phone's sitting. Um, and at what time, when... You know, just standard observations um, that I saw, what happened, or what triggered a response in my mind. Uh, again, here's something else to consider. Convoy movements. When this lockdown happened, okay, I was off one day shortly after when everything was shut down. Everything. You couldn't even go into a grocery store for a day, okay? It was just everything was shut down until they could get everything up, get everything ready, and then it all started. Boom, 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 boom. Panic buying started, and all that happened. Okay, we all know how that happens. We saw it all in the news. I'm not going to get too into that. But the town, the city that I live in, on the outskirts of, okay, just for fun, and just to see how bad it actually was, okay, I didn't do anything crazy, or anything out there, I got into my truck, and I drove from where I live to the complete opposite end of the city, okay, just to see how long it would take, normally it takes me about an hour and a half with traffic, two hours, okay, depending on which way I go, if I take the highway, but I didn't decide to take the highway, 
I took the back roads highway. There's not really more gridlock because there's a choke point. Uh, it goes from a three lane wide highway down to a two lane. So lots of merging right in the one lane and then opens back up to the four lanes, which uh, keep in mind stuff like that. By three lane, I mean three lanes on each side. Uh, then a four lane, it goes, opens up to four lanes. Places like that and SHDF, <laughs> avoid those. Uh, if people want to do bad things to other people, uh, just look up a kill zone, okay? That's why I avoid driving in areas like that. I look at maps, I look at aerial photography. Uh, Google Earth is a good one for that. If you look up your route on Google Earth, uh, follow the road system, see all the choke points, know how to get around them. Okay, anyways, going back to how long it took me. Okay, it took me about an hour and a half, normally. I got from one side of the town to the other in 25 minutes. There was not a single person in sight. I stood in the middle of downtown, in the middle of the road, for 20 minutes on the way back. I did not see a single person. I just stood there in the middle of the road, just taking it in. This is the world, people. Okay, things don't always go the way you want them to go. And I hope this situation has opened a couple people's eyes that you need to start getting prepared. Uh, you need to start doing the things, people. Uh, if you haven't, it's not too late yet. Pretty soon it will be, unfortunately start storing don't hoard okay that's what's going to flag you to certain people who work at the stores a friend of mine recently got into preparedness and he's barred from buying from a grocery store believe it or not uh because he purchased the entire shelf and that's all they have left so they accused him of being a hoarder and barred him from the store okay if you're gonna do that Go one day, buy a certain amount. Go another day, buy a certain amount. Go another day, buy a certain amount. Don't, or try not to do that because that makes you stand out when you have two shopping carts full of rice, okay? He, he, he was laughing about it now, but it wasn't a very big grocery store. Um, but yeah, he bought all the rice. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, look for alternate food sources. Okay, if you live out in the country, talk to farmers, see what you can get, uh, stuff like that. See if you can get deals. So I'm going to leave that at that. I'm coming in to work, so I'll make part two of this video probably tonight on the way home. OBB out.